Now you might be familiar with the phrase, Nero fiddled while Rome burned, but the history behind this quote is actually quite interesting, and maybe Nero wasn't fiddling at all. We're going to explore that in today's video. Let's get started. When Rome burned. The infamous phrase, Nero fiddled while Rome burned, has come to mean a person who is neglecting their duties, probably by doing something frivolous. Nero is painted as an emperor who didn't care about his people, but it's likely that he didn't deserve such a bad reputation. This is extremely similar to the tale of Marie Antoinette supposedly saying, let them eat cake, when hearing the starving masses, when, in fact, she never said this and popular history's representation of Antoinette has been heavily influenced by the 18th century French, who despised her, mostly because she was Austrian and a prominent member of the aristocracy, rather than because of anything she actually did, per se. Back to Nero. The story goes that a great fire swept through Rome in 64 AD, and Nero played his fiddle in a villa some miles away, ignoring his duty to the great city. In truth, there was such a fire, though its extent is unknown. The fire lasted for six days and decimated Rome, with only four districts untouched out of a total of 14. He goes on to state that 10 of the 11 districts that burned were heavily damaged, with three of those completely destroyed. However, oddly, there is very little documented mention of the fire from those who actually lived through it. The only Roman historian during that period who even mentioned it at all was Pliny the Elder, and even he only briefly referenced it in passing. Had it been as widespread as Tacitus claimed, one would think that the likes of Plutarch, Epictetus, or other such famed Roman historians who lived through the fire would have mentioned it. And indeed, we see that perhaps it wasn't that great of a fire from the only other documented first-hand account of the scope of the disaster, a letter from Seneca the Younger, where he explicitly stated that only four blocks of insuli were burned, a type of apartment building, along with 132 private houses damaged, about 7% of the private houses and 0.009% of the insuli. Not anywhere close as widespread as Tacitus later claimed, though Seneca did say the fire lasted six days, as Tacitus stated. As to Nero's reaction to the fire, the first and biggest flaw in the fiddling story is that the fiddle, or violin, didn't actually exist in Nero's time. Historians aren't able to give the exact date for the invention of the violin, but the vile class of instruments to which the violin belongs wasn't developed until at least the 11th century. Many agree that the violin itself wasn't being played until around the 16th century. If Nero actually did play a stringed instrument, and there's no evidence that he did, whether during the burning of Rome or otherwise, it was probably a lyre or a cithara. Okay, so some details can get muddled through history. Did Nero neglect Rome when it burned? Historians argue probably not. Reports do place Nero 35 miles away from Rome at the time of the fire, as he was staying in his villa at Antium. However, an account from Tacitus tells us that he returned to Rome immediately when word of the fire reached him in order to begin relief efforts. As the fire raged on, Nero even opened up his gardens to provide a temporary home for those who were now homeless. He also ordered the construction of emergency accommodation and cut the price of corn, as well as provided food directly so that people could eat. Besides this, he paid for much of these relief efforts out of his own pocket. However, Tacitus also tells us of the rumor that had spread among the masses. While the flames surged through the city, Nero stood on his private stage and sang about the destruction of Troy in a comparison of the two events. Whether or not the rumor had any evidence to back it up or it was just something made up by the unhappy masses, we don't know, but this and Suetonius's accounts are the most likely source of the fiddle story we hear today. Unfortunately for Nero, at least in the context of this story, he did have a reputation for enjoying concerts and participating in music competitions, so the activity itself wasn't entirely unlikely, even if the timing of the act is highly questionable. While Tacitus claims the singing story was a rumor, Suetonius wrote about it with conviction. However, the story could have been an attempt to further mar Nero's name. Nero faced problems during his reign from the very start, when it was reported that his own mother poisoned his predecessor, Claudius. He was also blamed for the death of Claudius' son, Britannicus, who was being urged to take his proper place as emperor by overthrowing Nero. Numerous other deaths were thought to be committed by Nero's hand, including one of his wives and his own mother. As such, Nero was painted as a man who was difficult for the masses to trust. No one knew how the fire started, and many Romans believed that he had started the fire that burned their city. With the mob out for blood, Nero was forced to turn to a scapegoat and blamed Christians for starting the fire. 
There were only a small number of Christians in Rome at the time, and they were considered a strange religious sect, so they were an easy target. As Tacitus stated, Consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures on a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace. Christus, from who the name has its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators. Pontius Pilatus and a most mischievous superstition, thus checked for the moment, again broke only in the Judea, the first source of the evil. But even in Rome, where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and become popular, Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all Christians who pleaded guilty to the fire. Then, upon their information, an immense multitude was convicted, not so much of the crime of firing the city as of hatred against mankind. Mockery of every sort was added to their deaths, covered with the skin of beasts. They were torn by dogs and perished, or were nailed to crosses, or were doomed to the flames and burnt, to serve as a nightly illumination when daylight had expired. Even finding someone to blame for the fire didn't help Nero's plea of innocence. In the wake of the fire, he built a palace on top of some of the land cleared by the flames, which people argued he had been planning from the start, though this is highly unlikely as the place he built the new palace was over half a mile away from where the fire started. In addition to a new palace, Nero did provide for the reconstruction of the city, but rebuilding stretched the limits of Rome's treasury at the time. He was forced to devalue Roman currency, which wasn't a popular move. Nero ended up committing suicide, or at least begging his secretary to kill him when he lost the nerve to do it himself, four years after the fire. Accounts of his life and of the time of the fire are highly contradictory. Further, Suetonius and Tacitus wrote their histories 50 years after Nero died, and Cassius Dio wrote his 150 years later. Many historians also think it likely that Nero was more popular with the people of Rome than he was with his senators, and as all three of the main sources were from the senatorial class, it's likely they carry more than a little bias against him, not unlike what happens with the popular history of Marie Antoinette as mentioned. That said, Tacitus did state that while Nero's death was welcomed by senators, the lower classes mourned his passing. So, in the end, the implication that Nero fiddled while Rome burned, or played the lyre, sang a song, or neglected his duty in any way, is likely the result of anti-Nero propaganda and an attempt to tarnish his name. The morality of his actions during his reign is open to debate, but the fiddling or playing music story, at the least, is almost certainly a myth. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.